Hello everyone, so good to see you. The PlayStation State of Play for the month of May was just the other day, and if you saw our reaction, we were largely unimpressed. Many news outlets, in fact, were unimpressed. It was wrought with the same affliction that we see in a lot of presentations like Sony's, Microsoft's, among others. That being, boy, the look of a lot of these games just kind of blend right into each other, don't they? This has become less of an exaggeration as time goes on. Realistic style shooters, team based shooters, the high fantasy aesthetic. I can't be the only one that sees a lot of these presentations sort of just smearing together at this point, right? That's not to discount the games that have a long ongoing legacy behind them. Silent Hill 2, Dynasty Warriors Origins, Monster Hunter Wilds especially looks amazing in its own right. That's the thing, these games, they have their audiences, but when you blend them into a presentation that starts out with Concord, a game which I had no idea what kind of genre I was looking at because for the first 5 minutes it's trying to be Guardians of the Galaxy. While it was entertaining, well produced and voice acted, um, this is a game presentation. This is a state of play, not a state of cinema. You see, a lot of these games, they look great, I get it. Encored, God of War Ragnarok on PC, which could have been an email, Ballad of Antara, Where Winds Meet, yeah. Visually stunning, but as the years go on, I find myself finding it harder to care about how many pores I can see in a character's skin texture. Developers are free to pursue any artistic direction that they want. It's their vision and choice to make something look hyper-realistic or artistically dynamic. But I think I've run into the point where I just don't really care how good a game looks. I value if a game runs and runs consistently well. I value if a game can load quickly, which given this generation of SSDs on the PS5 for example, is probably the biggest contribution in technology to gaming in recent memory. Loading massive games up in mere seconds? That's always super exciting. I'm in the opposite corner of this map, okay? This gargantuan open world map. And I'm just gonna warp from one nation to the next, alright? I have pressed the button, count how long it takes. And we're here! Anyone who has played Genshin Impact on the PS4 in comparison, oh god. When that was the only platform that I would play this on, this could take upwards of 20 seconds or so. But if you're the only PS4 in a party of those on a PS5, on their mobile phone, or PC users, the load time could take so long that the challenge would already be halfway over by the time your friend drops in. Funny at first, annoying as time went on. I'm still in shock of not just this, but other older titles that I can play on the PS5 and how they can load in the blink of an eye. That is when I'm like, <laughs> the technology is incredible. Amazing realistic graphics though, incredible lighting and shadows, being able to count every strand of hair on a person's head, that's just a bonus, I don't need that. It's cool that it's there, but the game is going to probably still play the same, isn't it? Ray tracing? At the end of the day, who actually cares if I can see my natural reflection on a puddle on the ground or against a mirror? If it isn't meant to be a core, integral part of the gameplay, then I'd rather you focus on making the game more enjoyable than flexing your tech. I'll pull the average Joe out of a crowd here in San Francisco, and I'll ask him, Hey dude, are you seeing this? This game has ray tracing. See that reflection on the wall? And Joe's gonna tell me, Who are you and why do you tell me this? But then shortly after, he says, Oh cool, that looks nice, yeah. Except this is on a Nintendo Switch. We don't got ray tracing. And yet, given the almost laughably limited power of the Switch in comparison, they can still make this neat little reflection on various surfaces. This is probably ironic to bring up after mentioning Paper Mario, but every time that a game gives me the option between performance or graphics modes, I always do performance. That smooth 60 FPS pleases my eyes over a graphical difference that honestly is hardly ever noticeable most of the time anyway. And this isn't to call out anyone who prefers graphics modes, you're free to do as you like. But realism just doesn't really strike me much anymore. With the PS5 and Xbox series, now more than ever we're seeing the upper plateau of fidelity that consoles can give us. Games don't look that dramatically different from last generation to this one, and at the end of the day, my PS5 and Series S can play mostly the same games and have the same looks. It just depends which plastic box you want to play them on most of the time. This again isn't to discredit devs that want to make realistic looking games and the audiences that wish to play them. I've had a lot of fun with the Horizon series, Spider-Man, Resident Evil 4 Remake, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, what have you. All amazing games in their own right, and they benefit from their art styles. But man, these are also taking a lot longer to make just to meet those graphical expectations in today's era, aren't they? 
We're looking at AAA titles taking upwards of five years. Part of the reason to make sure that every texture and model looks like that they can step right out of the TV. And this might be my own problem, but not only do I lose track of which game is which because they tend to all blend together during your presentation like in the Game Awards for example, the other problem is that these titles will take so long to develop from announcement to release that I'll go, did we hear about this game already? And half of the time, yeah, we have. Again, my own problem. Then again, a game like Infinity Nikki will immediately stand out in a crowd just like in the last state of play. People perked up and started talking about it, not just because of the concept of an open world dress up adventure game sounds too silly to be true, but also because it looks so graphically different from anything else within those 30 minutes. I wonder how many other people are experiencing this realism fatigue. This is why our precious indie darlings are so important in this day and age. Indies can look like whatever the heck they want to, but see, they take so much more of a risk because they have the space to do so. A game like Animal Well isn't under any pressure to make investors happy by selling millions and millions of copies to satisfy a greater audience. No! This little blob just wants you to explore this immersive world in all of its CRT inspired glory. Animal Well thrives in its simplicity and its ideology that a game doesn't have to explain anything for players to eventually form their own narrative. It starts as your explorative metroidvania, but this well goes as deep as the player is willing to put into it. And despite it being much shorter length than many AAA titles, I found that my time met the value of the experience. Also, you just gotta respect sprite art in any capacity. The game looks beautiful and unlike anything I have ever seen. Then look at a 3D game with a ridiculously strong visual identity like Hi-Fi Rush for example. It can be a big award winning hit, it can give players the feeling of playing a Saturday morning cartoon and garner wide appeal. But then the higher ups will gut the company and dissolve them, and why? Because making a sequel means that it wouldn't come out for another couple of years at least, and it would cost money? Oh god, heaven forbid that we use money to pay devs so a game can make money. That's a long term goal, what about my pockets today? Sorry, now we're getting on a tangent. I'm saying that it sucks that smaller studios are also getting grilled for successful games despite not making titles that are your cookie cutter Hollywood style playable movie. The big overarching message of this entire video is, I love a good art style. Modern games in hyperrealism is like looking at a pointillism painting. From far away, yeah, everything looks good and I can tell things apart. But then you zoom in real close and you're like, what the hell is this? It's just a bunch of dots? Looks dumb. Then you get games that are like a Pete Mondrian painting. The one with the primary color squares and the lines. You're like, wait, that looks way different than what the other guys are making. But the colors look nice. Like, this is cool and I appreciate what this does, of course. But what if we use more flat colors and, despite what tools everybody else is using for their art, we just make something quirky that stands out? When you go into a museum, you don't want to see the same artists all copying each other, right? You pay for admission because you're expecting to see a wide variety of concepts and ideas. Some traditional, while others are weird and just out there. As a kid, you only get drawn to the ones that you like, but when you get older, you appreciate the variety, at least marginally better as your tastes develop, right? Nintendo has been acing this for years now. One of the very first, and still one of the strongest examples of them establishing an art style that completely contrasts anything else out there in the market, was Yoshi's Island. This crayon drawing aesthetic is still a masterful work of art that stands the test of time. And it's done on a 16-bit console. Nothing else on the SNES looks like this. And that's on top of just being a really good game. The Legend of Zelda goes absolutely bonkers with this idea. Do you know any other series which will dramatically change the art style as much as Zelda does? If every Zelda with 3D models looked like Ocarina of Time, but just a little better with every generation, I think I'd go a little crazy. They'll all play perfectly fine, but now I'm conditioned to expect different art styles, and it's fascinating to see them all work cohesively in the grander scheme of things. Wind Waker was getting pies and tomatoes thrown at it when it was first revealed for being too different and cartoony, but now it's one of the most beloved games in the series. My second favorite Zelda ever still. And even now, there are artistic choices made in the original GameCube version that I just like more than the HD version. We've seen this happen with Mario, and very recently too. The new Super Mario Bros. series really started to lose its own identity with games like New Super Mario Bros. 2 or New Super Mario Bros. Wii U. It also gave Nintendo fans a newfound fear of the word new. But lo and behold, when Super Mario Bros. Wonder was shown off and then released, 
people were like, yes, this is the charisma and energy of Mario that we've been lacking for years. There's so many additional animations and interactions that give everyone so much character and it makes it so charming. The games played okay enough, but we truly realized how grossly fatigued we were of the new Super Mario Bros. aesthetic when Wonder released. People thrive and get excited by variety. You could argue that the big 3D Mario games still haven't achieved this leap in identity. From Sunshine to Odyssey and by extension Bowser's Fury, they have gotten more impressive and expressive, but they haven't really made the jump, pun not intended, as drastic as Zelda has accomplished. No, Mario pretty much reserved these choices for the side games. Super Mario RPG gave us Squat Boy, Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga gave us a sprite adventure that still looks unique to any other Mario game, and Paper Mario made him into a lovable beady-eyed wafer. People can go on about how the frame rate of 30 has killed their experience and or joy of Paper Mario, whatever, they probably didn't play the original or just don't have a soul anyways. If nothing else, these people make me wish that we had even less frames. That's right baby, let's turn this into a stop motion experience. I know certain Paper Mario games have already leaned a bit into that, so maybe that's a little too traumatic for some people to envision. Frame rate aside, just forget it, who cares? I love how this remake was handled. Like, the way everything was paper crafted, the way you can see everything formed with construction paper and curled up cardboard that you'd buy at a Michaels or Joanne's Fabrics. Maybe this is because I see these materials all over my house because I have three little sisters, but it all just looks so appealing. The sheen on the floor of Boggly Woods, for example, I know I've passed by those glossy floral patterns at an arts and crafts store before, and it's just accomplished so well here all around. This is what they were going for all those years ago. The attention that went into literally crafting a believable art style that you could replicate in real life. Along with the fact that the GameCube needed to flex the number of models you could handle on screen with every chapter, these contributed to the frame rate staying at 30 on the Switch. And long story short, you get used to it. This game is so wonderful and charming and, you know, good to play that your eyes will just adjust in time. And it's also just really silly that this is even a topical point when you consider that the vast majority of people who are going to play this game won't even know what frame rates are, even less that are aware that the original ran at 60. I do not care. Game is playable. Game is good. I will play it. The age-old philosophy of making a game fun, before anything else, has become especially poignant in a console generation that can only push the boundaries of graphical fidelity so far now. The leap from N64 to GameCube, or PS2 to PS3, it can't exactly happen twice. We can only go from vague blocky polygons to more believably human shapes and figures once, you know? Instead of going forward and pushing the art style further and further into realism, Nintendo has taken side avenues around the main path to see what other roads can be taken. And now, people are begging for more to do the same. If there is anything that you heard about in the recent state of play, it is likely about Astrobot. That game looks amazing! It looks so charming, there's an energy behind it, the other bots, the animations, the enemies. I don't know how to describe it, but I just felt good after watching the trailer. It gives me some hope that companies who see interest in this will realize, oh yes, people are more than happy to be playing smaller titles without painstaking years and several millions of dollars going into the budget. And I'm saying this like I'm talking about Astro's Playroom, but no, Astrobot is going to be like a proper full-length platformer, and I am ridiculously excited for it. That's the core gist of what I wanted to get off my chest. The creation of smaller titles that don't take 5 plus years to make is more than welcome. Stop worrying about every strand of hair or every minute detail in the graphics. At this point, a lot of people just want to look at something unique. The HD 2D look is entering a realm of being potentially overdone. But once a game like Dragon Quest 3 emerges, oh I bet people are going to be all over that. Because I know I will, part of the reason being that it's Dragon Quest. Anime inspired titles with their cell shading has become one of my favorite art styles. When animated well, it becomes one of the best looking visuals in this medium to my eyes because the style is just so impressive and I'm a weeb. Going beyond that, the artistic direction of certain Atlas games like Persona 3 Reload, past games like Tokyo Mirage Sessions, or upcoming titles like Metaphor Refantasio, the UI itself is a highlight of the game. If you told me that looking at menus was going to be something to actually help inspire my artistic style as a graphic designer when I started in high school, I'd have laughed in your face! 
but it's been proven to me that even now, something that should be as mundane as a user interface, as a menu itself, can take on its own art form and visual identity all its own. And honestly, nothing is perfect either. Genshin Impact will either give you one of the most beautiful vistas that you've ever seen in the last five years, or a complete incoherent concerto of visual effects and damage numbers. The Tail series is either doing its best visual art style that I've ever seen with a game that came out 15 years ago, or trying just a little too hard to please and appeal more of what is perceived to be the Western audience's preference. Fire Emblem Three Houses, you gotta admit, can look pretty ugly and jagged. Look at the background of any conversation. Those are just stretched out textures, and sometimes I can't believe how terrible the receding perspective looks. But it's still more popular than Fire Emblem Engage, which is the most beautiful Fire Emblem game that's ever come out because it was more than graphics that brought people to three houses. Fire Emblem Echoes Shadows of Valencia didn't set the world ablaze or anything, but man, people love to talk about the presentation of this game. The voice acting, the characters, the art done by Hidari. This is why I'm hoping that the eventual remake of Genealogy of the Holy War leans more into the direction of Echoes, with more of an emphasis on portrait art than models. I think it fits the theme and mood of Genealogy way better, and I personally just really want to see everyone done in Suzuki Rika's art style. If she's not the one doing the character art for this game, Nintendo done goofed up big time. <sighs> but yeah, that's just a big ol' shout at my personal peeves with some aspects of the market today. Does anyone even agree with the points that I made? I don't know. But what I do know is that you listened all the way to the end, so thank you so much for watching. And since you did, I'm gonna go a little bit on a, uh, uh, a Daniel ramble, as one might call it. So, I know I haven't been putting out a lot of videos lately. It's all honestly been very experimental. I've been trying to measure out how I can make videos in a practical way while making economical use of my time, at least as someone who isn't full-time here and balancing other things. It's difficult and scary, man. John's output is pretty phenomenal, and I'm like, how do I compare to this? I've tried to turn streams into condensed videos of highlights, and those don't do very well. I've done a very recent, longer-form video of product placement in Nintendo games, and that only did alright. It's like, the algorithm, what do they want from me, man? It's so weird, but most of the Tales of series videos that I do, they somehow do better than most of our usual output. Is it because there's not really like a specific Tales of YouTuber that people automatically think of and go to? I'm not sure. So here I am, doing more of a train of thought video to see, hey, maybe this will land better, or it'll do worse, who knows? But if anybody out there has enjoyed this and thought it was thought provoking while you're cleaning or working, then I'm happy. We all do our parts here at GBG, whether you actively see us or not, I promise you. I do personally want to see more discussions though, I mean, I'll, I'll edit them myself if I have to. I've at least gotten to thumb most of the videos on the channel for a good while now, I hope you've been enjoying those lately. We're slowly finding our footing, and I'm pretty sure that we can settle in there even more by the end of this year. Until then, I will see you on Twitch, where I'm usually streaming Tuesday and Thursday afternoons and evenings. Take care everyone, till we meet again.